Hello, hello, welcome back to the Lower Lap Time channel. In this video, we're going to look at practice one and practice two. We're going to look at the George Russell crash and the Alex Albon slash Oli Behrman crash. We're also going to talk about Franco Colapinto at the end. What does he need to do to get back into the points? Vamos a hablar sobre Franco Colapinto al final de este video. If you're interested in what my thoughts are, definitely keep watching. So let's talk about the free practice one session. Probably the best thing to do is bring up the results on the screen. So let's do that now and have a look at the results together. And we got George and Carlos topping the session. I said that Ferrari would be strong when I spoke on the Cameron CC channel because they were strong in Monaco. They were strong in Baku. That car's got great mechanical grip. And remember in Mexico, aerodynamics kind of take a back seat as the air pressure is less. Aerodynamics, DRS, a slipstream, high speed downforce, all that goes out the window. It shines a light on mechanical grip of the car. So we've got George and Carlos topping the session and Max only getting 14 laps as well, which is not many laps. We saw him struggling with a bunch of issues, car balance and engine to name a few. Colapinto, P11, 21 laps. That's great feedback, great information, a good session for Franco there to get P11 close to points already. And beating some of the other rookies, Kimi Antonelli in P12, learning with 19 laps. Let's talk about Kimi Antonelli for a second because he had that crash in Monza in the Parabolica. And we said, like, what is he doing? It's a new track. It's just been resurfaced. It's his first proper session in Italy. Like, where are the coaches and mentors? Where are the people that are helping him, nurturing him, nurturing that talent, saying, just take it easy, Kimi, just go around, feel the car, it's a one hour session, you don't need to set the world on fire. And so we saw that finally in this session here with 19 laps and P12. It didn't quite get ahead of Colapinto. Um, and then we got Patricio P13 with 21 laps as well. That's also a solid effort for a first time out in Mexico with the challenges that the circuit brings with it in terms of low grip and high speed corners as well. So we've got to talk about Alex Albon and Ollie Behrman's crash as well. And I can't help but feel that Franco is putting a little bit of pressure now on Alex, just due to the lap time and the results that Franco is getting in that car alongside Alex Albon. There's only one rule in Formula One, always beat your teammate. And Franco seems to be doing a good job at that at the moment. It's putting pressure on Alex. So I can't help but feel that some of the decisioning and some of the details in the critical moments aren't going Alex Albon's way at the moment because he is under pressure from the young Franco 21 year old from Buenos Aires put some respect on his name so what happened I don't think Oli Behrman is to blame here I mean he's just sitting on the side of the track he can't disappear you know that Ferrari can't just get out of the way so Alex is the one that needs to just take the caution build the weekends build up build the knowledge build the confidence build the information get the data. His car was painted with the Flovis paint on the right-hand front suspension on the side of the car. So they want to get information back. And by sticking it in the wall, it's not a good look, guys. And it's not a good sign for Alex Albon fans. I think he he's going to have to go away and do a lot more work, bring in the right people and uh, recenter and try to nurture some of that talent in a better way. Because at the moment, um, and it's, it's guys, it's only Franco that's come in. Like, it's not like he's got Lewis Hamilton or Fernando Alonso or someone that's proven, like he just needs to get back to basics. So I, that's how I read this crash. I don't read it in a technical way. I read it more like Alex is desperate and he shouldn't be very strange accident. So I don't have too much more to say on that one other than it was clumsiness. So let's take a look at the FP2 results. And again, I'm going to bring them up on the screen in front of you. We are going to have a look at the top speeds together as well. So let's bring it up. So we've got the Ferraris starting to flex, both of them finding their way to the front of the grid here. Again, Mexico shining a light on the mechanical performance of the car. Check out Yuki Tsunoda, who got P3 in both sessions there. I think that's a really good underrated and underspoken, undervalued performance there to get P3 in both FP1 and FP2. Yuki is in the mix and it'll be interesting to see how Liam Lawson can respond. It's a great response from Yuki because everything has been about Liam Lawson um, doing a stellar job in Austin and he did, but Yuki knows now he needs to lift if he wants to get a chance in that Red Bull seat. So by P3 in both sessions, it's a good start for Yuki Sonoda. And we need to talk about George's crash as well. So that's three crashes 
in three days for the Mercedes outfit. That's two crashes in Austin, George and Lewis, and now another crash in Mexico with George. Both Alex Albon and George Russell's crash, both of them were playing around with the curbs. So it seems like the cars just don't like that. When they land, there's not enough downforce in Mexico for the cars to resettle and then carry on. Remember when Carlos Sainz crashed in the last corner in Singapore? Same thing. He started accelerating from a very low speed and then the car didn't have enough downforce to resettle. So when it hit that bump, the rear slid and he went into the wall. It's the same sort of thing here. Cars downforce is not really a thing due to the high altitude and the low air pressure in Mexico. So you've got to really be careful with those bumps and how you can avoid spinning in those situations is just trying to keep the steering wheel as straight as possible. The more lock you have, the more it's going to have tendencies to slide. So a mistake there from George. The Mercedes has been struggling with the rear grip all year. I'm sure both of those drivers are absolutely sick of that Mercedes. So he puts it in the wall. Not a good look and not a good start for their weekend as well. Max down the bottom there with only four laps. Again, that's not great for his championship chances. He does have a healthy lead. Everything is looking good at the moment. But as far as Max Verstappen is concerned, he's going to need to pull one out of the bag tomorrow in qualifying. He's going to need to draw on his experience and draw on his skill set if he's going to get that Red Bull up the grid tomorrow in qualifying. Let's bring up the top speeds quickly. This is going to be very important because I am saying that this should be a one-stop race track position is going to be critical so let's bring up the top speeds and have a look at them together so again you've got uh carlos Sainz and charles leclerc there with the fastest time so not only is that car quick overall it's also very quick in a straight line which is helpful when it comes to attack and defense uh interesting that you've got hamilton and george russell split by quite a distance there hamilton p1 and you've got george down there in p7 um, Perez and Verstappen, identical, so nothing to look at there. Sonoda, 46, uh, that's fine. That's pretty good, actually. That's interesting because he was pretty quick. So with the lower top speed, that's that's interesting. So there's obviously some more wing on that Alpha Tauri. Um, and you got Colapinto down there, 344. And both McLarens down there, Piastri and Norris, 342 and 341. That's not great for the McLaren guys. That means they're going to struggle to get past or defend if they're in any sort of decent position or they need to do some work. But Colapinto down there in 344, we are going to talk about Franco in a second as well. All right, let's talk about Franco Colapinto. ¿Qué necesita hacer Franquito Colapinto para, para hacer una buena fin de semana? Es muy importante esa carrera. Cada carrera que, que tiene es muy importante porque no tiene muchas oportunidades. Solo tiene seis o siete carreras. Entonces cada carrera es muy, 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 muy importante. Para mí, la clasificación y el, la estrategia es muy importante. ¿Por qué? Porque es muy difícil pasar en México. Um, siempre ha sido así y me gustaría ver un, una parada en boxes para Franco. Como medio duro o duro medio, a mí me da igual. Tienen que hablar juntos y hacer una decisión, pero una parada en boxes es muy importante. La posición en, en la pista es la más importante en México en, com en combinación con la, la clasificación, claro. Entonces estoy buscando mucha práctica en neumáticos suaves para, para sentir la carrera en neumáticos suaves y también la configuración del coche con los neumáticos suaves también es muy importante. ¿Por qué? Porque la clasificación es la más importante, pues es muy difícil pasar. Entonces uh, esto es, es que es que estoy buscando en uh, el final práctica de Franco Colpinto. Mantener la posición en la pista uh, es, es lo más importante para mí. La problema es que los equipos y los ingenieros en Fórmula 1 a veces puede ser como boludos, en serio. Uh, en particularmente como cuando estoy diciendo o hablando sobre de la estrategia. Uh, es muy... Mira, McLaren, por ejemplo, Ferrari también, uh, el ingeniero de la carrera también. Puedes, no sé cómo, cómo están, pero a veces puede ser como, como tontos, como boludos. E entonces, por eso, yo estoy diciendo que yo quiero ver esas cosas de la estrategia uh, en domingo. Franco ya tiene una buena enseñador um, de piloto, 
desde, desde, desde siempre en todas las, las uh, categorías estaban trabajando juntos. Uh, se llama Lucas, que es muy, muy, muy bien. Uh, tiene mucho respeto para los dos. Pero Fórmula 1 es algo un poquito diferente. Como yo dije, es muy como estrategia y planes del, del, del coche, configuración de coche. Es muy como cómo usar los neumáticos y preservar estos. Es muy como técnica, entonces hay muchos botones, muchos de, de controlar eh, el coche también. Es más como técnica. Entonces, por eso estoy diciendo la información y qué necesita hacer para hacer una buena carrera. ¿En qué manera puedes ayudar? Uh, compartir este video con un amigo. Compartir este video con, con tu social media. Comenta el video también si eres de Argentina. Me gustaría saber y hablar contigo. Y también hacer un thumbs up a este video también. Uh, muchas gracias por eso, en serio. So that's all for this video, guys. If you could, please let me know any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. And I'll see you tomorrow after qualifying. Cheers.